now in this problem we have got an equilateral triangle ABC so here you can see I'm drawing an equilateral triangle A B and C so the vertex are marked as A B and C an equilateral triangle and each of side 10 meters so the each side happens to be 10 meter each of side 10 meter and then it carries a charge of plus 100 micro coulomb minus 100 micro coulomb and 75 micro coulomb placed at b c and d where d is the midpoint of b c so b has got a 100 micro coulomb charge c has got a minus 100 micro coulomb charge whereas the point d which happens to be the midpoint carries a 75 micro coulomb charge now further they say there is a charge of 1 micro coulomb placed at a so at a i have got a 1 micro coulomb charge that i have placed at a now what is required they are asking us to find out the force experienced by the charge placed at a so at this point i am interested in finding out the force experienced by the charge placed at a now that's the question now see here we have got three charges b c and d applying the force on a b being positively charged a also being a positively charged particle b is going to apply a repulsive force on a and this will be directed as shown in the figure now this is the force that b applies on a and i am writing it down as fba a repulsive force similarly if you look for the charge situated at c c also applies a force on a again if you notice a is positively charged c is negatively charged so the force that c applies on a will be an attractive force so it is going to pull a towards itself and i am going to draw it by drawing an arrow length and I'm going to mark this force as FCA. Now remember, arrow being a uh, sorry force being a vector quantity will be represented by an arrow or an arrowhead. Now for the force that the D applies on A. Now this is the charge at D, 75 micro coulomb. It is a positive charge. Charge at A is also a positive charge. The force that D applies on A is also repulsive, and it will be directed away so outward directed force again being a vector quantity force being a vector quantity i am going to denote it by an arrow and this will be a force that d applies on a so i have marked all the three forces with the help of an arrow length as you can see in this particular diagram now i need to calculate their magnitude now since the forces uh, sorry since the charges are point charges the force between them can be found using Coulomb's law and we all know the Coulomb's law states that F force between any two point charges can be written as 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught magnitude of the first charge Q1 multiplied by the magnitude of the second charge Q2 upon R square where R happens to be the distance of separation between the two charges. This is known as Coulomb's law one should always remember the coulomb's law is applicable only for point charges so whenever you are you are being asked to state coulomb's law don't forget to mention that the coulomb's law is applicable only for point charges now force that is experienced by particle situated at a due to particle situated at b i have written down as fba the magnitude of the force will be 1 upon 4 pi epsilon naught I'm replacing it by a constant K K Q1 Q2 that is the charge situated at one point that is 100 micro 10 to the power of minus 6 Q2 1 micro to 1 into 10 to the power of minus 6 and the distance of separation between them the direct distance between them we take into account and this distance as you can see was 10 meter to 10 k square 
टेन स्क्वायर इज हंड्रेड सो दिस हंड्रेड एंड दिस हंड्रेड गोज ऑफ इट गिव्स मी के इन टू टेन टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस ट्वेल्व न्यूटन ना रिमेंबर डोंट फॉर गेट टू मैंशन द यूनिट ऑल दीज मिस्टेक्स कैरी द मार्क्स अवे फ्रॉम यू सो के इन टू टेन टू द पावर ऑफ माइनस ट्वेल्व न्यूटन फॉर द सेक ऑफ सिंप्लिसिटी आई एम गोइंग टू डो नोट दिस एज एफ सो दैट वाइल सॉल्विंग इट बिकम्स इजियर फॉर मी टू सॉल्व द इक्वेशन ना Similarly, I am going to find out the force due to C on A. So, force due to C on A will be again one upon four pi epsilon naught. That has been replaced by a constant k. The magnitude of the first charge that happens to be hundred micro coulomb. The second charge that happens to be one, and for micro, I am replacing ten to the power of minus six, and the distance between them is again ten k square. and that comes out to be again k into 10 to the power of minus 12 newton and remember i have already considered this value as f now i have to find out the third force that is force that the particle situated at d applies on a again using the coulomb's law k into now the charge situated at day d is 75 micro coulomb to 75 into 10 to the power of minus 6 into charge situated at a was 1 micro coulomb so 1 into 10 to the power of minus 6 upon the distance now the distance between them is da square now i do not know what is the value of da so what i need to do i must calculate the value da now if you refer to this diagram this distance is da now this is an equilateral triangle each side being 10 cm this line joins the midpoint hence it will be at 90 degree now this is 10 this being d being the midpoint so making this distance to be 5 meter now this becomes a right angle triangle that i have shaded now and using the pythagoras theorem in this triangle i can say that using pythagoras theorem okay using pythagoras theorem i can say that hypotenuse square that is ab square 90 degree opposite side is always called as hypotenuse remember this fact ab square will be equal to sum of the other two sides square sum of the square of the other two sides is known as pythagoras theorem so ab square will be equals to ad square plus bd square now how much is ab that was 10 ka whole square ad i do not know ad or da ka whole square I'm not aware of it plus what is bd square bd square is 5 square so this becomes 5 ka whole square so 100 is equals to da square plus 25 therefore da square happens to be 75 or da happens to be root of 75 meter okay now i have got the value of da using the geometry class 10th geometry or even lesser than that and i'm going to substitute it over here in this expression that we have already got now putting this value of da k 75 into 10 to the power of minus 12 upon da value da value was root 75 and root 75 whole square will give it 75 this 75 and this 75 cancels out i again land up with k into 10 to the power of minus 12 newton now see all these three forces are equal in magnitude they have got the same value and i have already considered it to be equal to f now what is left for me is to find the resultant of these three forces now if you see the force fba force fca 
are at an angle of 120 degree why it is an equilateral triangle each angle being 60 degree this becomes ex all, uh, exterior angle so you can do a little bit of geometry to get this angle as 120 degree so the first thing that I am going to do I am going to find the resultant of FBA and FDA and this resultant I am going to denote as R1 so R1 is the resultant R1 is the resultant of FBA and FCA now using the law of vector addition triangle law of vector addition you know the result as R1 is equals to under the root of FBA whole square plus FCA whole square plus 2 times FBA FCA into cos theta where theta is the angle between the two vectors in this case 120 degree now for the sake of simplicity I have already written FBA FCA FDA as F so I am going to just reproduce them in the terms of F so this becomes F square plus F square plus 2 F into F into cos of 120 degree now cos 120 degree happens to be minus half substituting it over there under the root of F square plus F square plus 2 F square cos 120 degree being minus half so this and this goes off leaving me R1 to be equal to F which is happening which happens to be k into 10 to the power of minus 12 newton this is the resultant of fba and fca so now what will be the direction of this resultant the direction of this resultant since these both the forces are equal in magnitude remember one corollary from the vectors if the resultant uh, sorry if the vectors are equal in magnitude then the resultant always lies along the angular bisector so this angular bisector will represent the resultant of FB and FC that is R1 this angle being 60 degree and this angle also being 60 degree now FDA was at an angle of 30 degree why because this was the angular bisector so FDA was at an angle of 30 degree so if you notice the angle between FDA and R1 is 90 degree so the net resultant force so for the net resultant force and what is the net resultant force net resultant force is the resultant of FDA and R1 angle being 90 degree so F net will be under the root using the same formula but I am replacing cos theta with theta being 90 degree cos 90 degree being 0 so the entire this term will go in the second expression so I will be having only R1 square plus FDA square left with so R1 is also F and FDA was also F if you remember from our earlier calculation this FDA was found to be equal to F so F square plus F square so F net will be F root 2 and what was F root 2 F was K into 10 to the power of minus 12 K into 10 to the power of minus 12 root 2 or 9 into 10 to the power of my 9 into 10 to the power of minus 12 root 2 or simply 9 into 10 to the power of minus 3 times of root 2 newtons that gives us the answer of this particular problem thank you guys